Welcome back to the channel that helps animals. My name is Omni, and today we're going to be going over a video optimization guide for Escape from Tarkov. I'm going to cover you know, not only FPS gains that you can get from some of these settings, but also just making things visually smoother and increasing your ability to pick out targets at range, which is obviously incredibly important in Escape from Tarkov. So we're going to go over some things outside of the game first uh, that will help you help you optimize a little bit better, because as we all know, you know otherwise you wouldn't be looking for a video on this topic escape from tarkov is just not all that well optimized at this po at this point i just want to preface this video with the fact that there is never going to be a one-size-fits-all solution to a problem like this so you probably will need to apply critical reasoning skills to adjust and or implement the tools that we're providing you here with these are just some tips and tricks i've picked up along the way and hopefully they help you first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our nvidia control panel manage 3d settings is where you're going to go first and we're going to go over to program settings at this point you should um have a drop down where you can pick escape from tarkov or you you might need to add it find the directory and, and add that exe to this but most likely it should be there and we're going to go over um some of the settings that we are changing from default only all right we're not going to get too in depth on what these do because we don't want this video to go on for two hours the first one is going to be your anti-aliasing gamma correction uh this doesn't really this doesn't really have a huge impact in the game uh and i'm just taking it off just in case it affects some of the other things that we're using to modify the gamma um, so that we don't have any wild cards so to speak i don't think leaving this on is going to cause any problems but i keep it off just in case um, low latency mode this depends on on what you're doing in terms of your monitor if you have g-sync you want this on ultra g-sync or free sync um, if you have a high refresh rate monitor other than that you would want this on um, and if you have like a 60 hertz monitor or you're just playing on on something that doesn't have a high refresh rate above of like say 80 to 120 you'll just want this off which is the global setting monitor technology obviously i'm using a g-sync monitor or g-sync compatible which would be free sync um so i'm going to have that turned on anything else you're just going to have that um you're just going to have that to whatever your monitor is uh your power management mode you want to change this from default uh, or global to prefer maximum performance basically what this does is it keeps your gpu ramped up the entire time uh, you don't necessarily need this if you have a good if you have a good rig but you know, I, I prefer to have it on at all times because it's not going to hurt anything to have that ramped up beyond using some extra extra power. Uh, your preferred refresh rate uh, is going to be highest available. Change that from global. Your texture filtering antistropic sample optimization should be on. This is by default off. Texture filtering quality, we want this on high performance. The trilinear optimization, we want on. Threaded optimization, we also want on. The vertical sync, we want off. Um, this is just so that the in-game setting doesn't override it. We're also going to turn this off in Tarkov, but more on that in a little bit. After you have all those options clicked, you're going to go ahead and hit apply. And then we're going to move over to our next set of settings, which is going to be your desktop color settings. A lot of this is going to be personal preference. You're going to have to play with this a little bit just to kind of get it to the point where you like it. The most important slider you're going to modify here is the gamma slider. The brightness, uh, I've seen a lot of people adjust this up. Uh, however, I find that this washes out the screen once you get the gamma you know above a certain level i find that this just kind of adds too much uh too much white to the screen it looks kind of awful so i leave i leave this at 50 percent. but you certainly could bump this up um you know if it looks a little bit too dark for you but i again i would go back to this gamma setting if you're going to adjust anything most people i've seen will run this at 1.5 or higher some of them go as high as like 1.7 uh, i leave mine around 145 just because we stream a lot and i think it looks it looks kind of bad when it gets too washed out uh, we do have a little bit of contrast uh this should be somewhere between 60 to 70 percent. Um, I usually run it around 65. Uh, the digital vibrance just kind of brightens everything up in Tarkov. It pulls out some of the colors. The greens look greener. The yellows look more yellow, etc., etc. So you definitely want this higher, um, somewhere between 60 to 80 percent generally. Um, but all of this will work very well once you see the post effects uh, that we're running. Uh, all right, guys. This next one is a little weird, uh, but if you're like me and had some odd settings just by default, this could mean some pretty huge gains for you for this one we're going to go all the way back to 2018 uh, back then the escape from tarkov developers uh, requested that users increase their page file to 20 to 30 gigabytes or as much as you can spare uh, in lower settings when you go into your windows search bar you're going to want to go view advanced settings here and then click on the advanced tab
tab. And then you're looking for the performance tab here uh, that relates to virtual memory. And you're going to go into this particular menu and then hit advanced again. And you're down here where it's uh, talking about your paging file. You're going to hit the change button. And you're just going to check to make sure that these settings exist. So for me, uh, my C drive was fine, but our M2 drive uh, was actually at no paging file. Uh, so what we've done here is we've created a custom size uh, with the minimum initial size as 12,000 and the maximum size as 30,000. You can adjust these as necessary uh, for your specific types of RAM. But this particular, uh, and then you hit the set button, of course, and then and then OK. This will require a reboot. Uh, but since we had no paging file to begin with, we did notice a pretty significant significant jump in our frames when we uh, did that setting change. Uh, the next utility we're going to be using is called Process Lasso. You can pick this up uh, from bitsum.com. I'll throw a link up on the video there. It's a free utility. Uh, you can There is a paid version, which I have uh, for the Pro Balance effect. It, it will throttle processes that are uh, taking too many system resources uh, and apply uh, restrictions uh, per your settings. Uh, but the main purpose of this of this utility is to give Intel users the ability to set some, some core affinities. Um, in the in-game options, there is a, a little checkbox that says use physical cores only it actually does not work at this moment so this gives you the ability to set that by going to cpu affinity on the tarkov exe you're going to go to always and you're going to disable hyper threading what that's going to do is put little check boxes next to the even numbered uh, cpus which are your physical cores this should give you a pretty significant boost if you haven't uh, found a way to do this already uh, and then the other thing you're going to want to do and this applies for uh, the amd users as well is you're going to want to go to priority and you're going to go to always as well and you always make sure that's on high all that does is uh, allocate some system resources you know if, if if there's a lot of processor getting eaten up it makes sure that uh, escape from tarkov is getting the resources it needs and being that it's a processor bound game um, this is a very important setting. There's one more adjustment we can make using the process lasso. Um, there is a desktop windows manager exe file that's generally running in the background, which normally has a high priority setting just by default. Um, that's this exe here. It was set to high on my screen. Um, I have backed it down to normal. Um, this is one that we're still toying with. I don't know that there's any benefit to this, but searching around on the Reddit, a lot of people have said that this has has impacted their system pretty significantly. Um, so this is kind of one of those try at your own risk and not really sure if it works sort of things. But you know, once you've gone through everything else, if you want to try to squeeze a couple more frames out, definitely give this one a shot. Uh, we can use the process lasso to uh, turn that down to normal. I did notice it, it gives us an interesting error and it basically says, hey, whoa, whoa, <laughs> you, you sure you want to do this? Uh, and you know, you obviously you click through that and uh, I did notice there are some interesting rendering uh, quirks that come afterwards. Um, nothing substantial to this point, but it's worth noting. One other trick is to ensure that you have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling actually enabled. Some people don't by default. Um, to enable this, you want to open your start menu, uh, open the settings cog, and in the settings, you're going to click on system and then open the display tab. That's what we have open here. And under the multiple displays section, you're going to select graphics settings. That's this one here. And you're going to make sure this is ticked on and that should uh, give you a pretty big boost if it's not. Um, I have heard that there are some issues if you're streaming from your gaming PC. I have heard that there are issues with this interfering with OBS, uh, but I use a streaming PC. This doesn't seem to impact me uh, at all. All right, so let's go through the in-game settings now and optimize everything there. On your game tab, uh, you're going to want to uh, enable this automatic RAM cleaner uh, in the most recent 13.1 update. This is supposed to work. I haven't actually done enough testing to find out for sure, but this is supposed to work now. So I've got to check just in case. Uh, this, as we mentioned earlier, this use only physical cores. It doesn't actually do anything at this moment in time. So you just leave this unchecked. Uh, checking it shouldn't hurt anything either though, but just in case, I would leave that unchecked. Uh, your FOV is mostly personal preference. Uh, I have this set in the 60s most of the time because that's relatively close to what 100 is uh, for the Russian developers, um, but you can move this up and down and see how this affects systems. Um, it really shouldn't make that much of an impact. Uh, the preload hideout is really the only other thing that might affect your FPS in game. I don't know when it checks to preload. I don't know when, you know, when it does this. If it's just at the loading screen, it shouldn't affect anything at all. However, it, you know, if there's something that it's attempting to load 
load it while you're in game uh, this could affect your performance so I've just left it unchecked I haven't really noticed a huge difference you know it, it doesn't take forever to load the hideout or anything like that so that's just the way I've left it uh, moving over to your graphics settings uh, you're gonna want to be on your native resolution unless you're running some sort of um, you know high resolution monitor that requires you to do otherwise uh, and then your screen mode you want to be on full screen if possible this is a pretty big one um, I can't run full screen because of how much I stream and I need to be able to alt tab back and forth however uh, you will get a much better performance from a full screen mode so as you can see we've got our overall quality set to custom because we're going to be changing a lot of these settings so your texture quality there's really not a, as big of a difference here as there is with a lot of other games uh, so I typically will run this on high it allows me to differentiate players in, in backdrops a little bit more easily there's not a huge performance hit when you when you move this from low to high the shadows quality this is a pretty big performance hit and I found that people tend to stick out a little bit better in in the darker areas with a low shadows quality so I run this on low your LOD quality is a much more important uh, setting than people realize because this will impact the distance at which you're rendering players uh, if you have this all the way down to two uh, players sometimes won't render out to 150 170 meters it just depends on on where you're at on the map and what map it is uh, but you need to have this at three or above if you don't have a very good rig you might have to run this at two and a half just depending on how much performance uh, gain or decrease you you have from changing this setting but this is definitely one I would highly highly encourage you messing around with you know do all your other settings first and then come back and run this one as, as high as you can without affecting too much because it, it doesn't just affect the players rendering right this is also the detail of the models that are rendering out you know out on the horizon and this sort of thing so it, it, it is kind of a drag on the system resources to turn it up too high. I mean, I, I'm running a pretty good setup, and three and a half is about where I draw the line. So uh, this allows me to see players, you know, all the way out to, to three to three fifty, uh, which is usually more than enough, especially with this overall visibility setting, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. This is uh, just quite simply like if you see a bunch of trees in the background, or you know, uh, say for example, some boxes or that this sort of thing, just any sort of assets that are loading into the map this is the distance at which the game will render them um, at this is set to 400 meters most of the time you're not really looking past 400 meters anyway there aren't a whole lot of sight lines on most maps that allow you to see past this um, but you know if you're playing maps like shoreline or woods a lot or lighthouse you know you might want to bump this up to a thousand there's nothing wrong with doing that it, it is a, a little bit of a, an impact on your system resources but it's not it's not overwhelming for, for most systems so if you want to bump that up you can the problem being that if you have this set low and you're doing long distance sniping sometimes you'll have a player or an AI say for example behind an object that you can't see so you're shooting the object over and over and the bullets aren't penetrating and, and you're not killing that particular uh, player or AI so that's really the only the only issue that comes up with that being low um, the anti-aliasing uh, this one has a, a, a somewhat of a system impact you I have this set to TA a high but if you're if you're running like a low to mid tier system you're going to want to run that on TAA um, the resampling I'll you always want that off uh, DLSS I don't know a single person that runs this and actually likes it I know they've said they've fixed it you know half a dozen times but I still get all sorts of weird tracers and artifacts off every single scope I put on uh, when I'm running this it's just not worth it uh, the AMD settings you know I've, I don't run AMD so I've got these off uh, you have to uh, you'd have to look these up separately there's a good guide on the reddit which we're gonna put into um, into the description of the video where you can check that out um, the HBAO uh, this is system dependent I this this is probably one of the settings that makes the game uh, really look better uh, by by a significant margin so I do run this for, for the most part so I, I would encourage you to at least try to turn this on and see and see how it impacts your system and FPS if you can't run it you know it's not a big deal but it does it does make the game look more pretty um SSR is always off uh, all of these options at the bottom always off these are all going to drag your system down uh, some of them are counter 
uh, productive in my opinion, like the Zeebler and chromatic aberrations, the noise as well makes it look all film grainy. I don't know what the purpose of those is. Your MIP streaming, you only need that if you have a very small amount of RAM, uh, so you don't need to worry really about any of those. Uh, we've got anisotropic filtering off. Uh, we've got NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on and boost. If you're capable of running this, I highly encourage you running that. Um, the sharpness, uh, I've seen a lot of people try to crank this, but I don't like that, it's especially when you're on painkillers that makes the screen look really weird grainy the lighting is completely off so if your screen looks a little funny when you're when you're taking those painkillers or, or too much so then you'll want to bump this down a little bit um, your lobby game FPS limits obviously these are the MIP streaming isn't going to be checked unless you have MIP streaming enabled um, so all those stay uh, as is the lobby FPS limit does, doesn't really impact anything obviously uh, so we will move on to post effects all right so with the post effects I I strongly encourage you to uh, figure out what you like the best on your own um, or at the very least modify what I have here to suit your needs. Um, I'll kind of give you uh, my method of how I'm doing this uh, on my own and, and that will allow you to adjust this uh, to, to whatever you need it to be in the future. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, I'll go into an area of a map I know I'm going to spend a lot of time on. Like Generally I'm adjusting this to the resort and shoreline. I think the majority of us, uh, the whole goal of the post effects is to kind of pull out uh, those darker areas, make them a little bit more visible, brighten them up, sharpen them up uh, and that's really the main use for post effects right you know aside from the people running around trying to use it to make black and white night vision but we're not going to talk about those people here um so what you do is you go to your favorite map get wherever you want to be you hit this button here, visualize, right? So this allows you to play with the sliders um, while you're actively watching how it's affecting the environment, okay? So uh, the first one I want to talk about is the brightness. I A lot of guys crank this up, and, and you can do that, um, but I usually use leave mine between 0 to 20 because it, get, it, it really washes out a lot of stuff, uh, and it makes it look just overbearingly bright with all of the other settings that we modified earlier in the game. So typically, I'm going to leave this around 20. If you really want to brighten up and wash out the game, um, you can run it higher. If you're not streaming, it's not a huge deal. You know, you don't have, you don't have to make that presentation, right? If you want to pull people out of those dark corners, uh, then, then crank that up, up higher. Um, the saturation, this, this affects the color, the colorfulness of the game. You see how it looks kind of drab when I slide it down like that. Um, I almost always have this as high as it'll go. Tarkov is a really dark and kind of a dreary game. I like pulling the colors out of it. It just it just makes everything look better. Uh, and the clarity here, you can see that this doesn't make a huge impact. But if you look at the the areas on the floor directly in front of me, how they brighten as I'm as I'm sliding this, this is why um, with sharpness and clarity the painkillers become an issue. So uh, I'm on painkillers like 70% of the raid <laughs> because we're pushing people all the time. So uh, I tend to run this at zero. Um, the colorfulness, it's pretty obvious. It's a similar setting to the saturation, just in, it affects it in a different way. So I've got that at 100 generally. The Luma Sharpen, um, I run this at 100. You can see it really darkens that area up. Um, and this doesn't wash out as much as modifying the brightness does. So I'll usually crank that up. Uh, the Adaptive Sharpen, I'm usually leaving at 50. This, this uh, doesn't really do much as far as I can tell, um, except for, you know, make the textures look a little bit different. It does kind of brighten up a, a couple of the models. So I'm generally going to run this somewhere between 50 to 75, depending on your preference. Um, the color grading. So this is really where things get kind of tricky, right? So a lot of people have a lot of different uh, color gradings that they use. I've seen people use cognac a lot. Um, I've seen people use... Uh, Montreal, I've, oh, excuse me, Montreal. Um, I personally like Chillwave. These settings above, if you switch your color grading, you will probably have to modify almost all of these settings to some degree. Um, the main, And then the main thing to keep in mind with the Chillwave is that it actually darkens things if you go too high. There's like a sweet spot with Chillwave. Um, and it's right around between 25 to 45, just depending on what your preference is. Is, right you see how that 
that back area gets lighter and then darker as we move it in. Uh, typically I'm running this around 30, 35. Uh, the colorblind mode, I don't mess around with that. Um, you can make things look pretty strange if you do that. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's pretty much it for the post effects. Once you're all done, you just hit apply and boom. All right, that's gonna about do it for this video, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope this video helped you. If it did, make sure you throw a like, comment, and uh, sub in there for us. It really helps with the exposure. Be sure to drop into our Twitch channel. We stream pretty much every evening from 6 p.m. PST to 10 p.m. PST, and uh, the channel donates uh, most of its revenue to local animal shelters. So if you like animals, come support the channel. Come say hi. I hope to see you guys soon, and uh, good luck, and be safe in Tarkov.